I'm Jim Kircher, and this, of course, is a statue of Robert Wadlow, the world's tallest man, born here in Alton 100 years ago in February of 1918. He was so amazingly tall, it's easy to forget that this is a statue of a real person. In so many other ways, Robert Wadlow was a regular guy, or at least somebody who was trying to be a regular guy. One of the few places he could really do that was here in his hometown. He was known as the Alton Giant because of a pituitary gland condition that could be treated today. He grew to nearly nine feet tall, and Robert Wadlow went into the record books as the world's tallest man. But he died at the age of 22, so for most of his life, he was a growing boy. Wherever he went, here he is at age 15 with the YMCA group at the Chicago World's Fair. He couldn't help but attract cameras and crowds, which then became his job with St. Louis's International Shoe Company. He traveled from town to town, shoe store to shoe store. But he did consider it a job. He considered it a full-time job. His title was field representative for International Shoe. Tim Leone produced a documentary about Robert Wadlow's life in 1991. He tracked down the photos and the films. He interviewed those who had known him. And he talked with us about what he found. Here in Alton is the place where Robert was best known and really was the place that he, the only place he could just be Robert Wadlow and not the world's tallest man. True. To the people of Alton's credit, Robert was viewed and thought of as just one of the guys. He had always been bigger than everybody. He had been bigger than the teachers in grade school. He was bigger than all the students. He was bigger than every adult. He was bigger than every car. He was the biggest thing, and he always had been that way. So the people here, his classmates, the teachers, the people in the church, and the various civic groups that he belonged to, didn't really react adversely to him. He, Robert had always been that way, so they didn't really think of it as anything out of the ordinary. Tim, where was all of this stuff? Was it all in one place, or did you have to go around digging for, for the, uh, the photographs, the films that you did find? We had to dig rather deeply through attics, basements, personal collections, newspapers from around the country, the International Shoe Archives, the local newspapers, what have you. The film clips we found were from Europe, the National Archives, and again, people's basements and attics. A lot of the things were uh, official films. They were. Um newsreel photos, newspaper photos. Here in town, though, were there lots of pictures that people had just snapped of Robert Wadlow? There were more pictures than what most people thought. There were a lot of candid shots taken at the high school of Robert by his classmates, but not very many photographs, candid photographs of Robert taken at home or what have you. The father would always expect to be paid. If anybody had a camera, the father said, how much money do you have in your pocket? Penny, nickel, dime, quarter and we'd be expected to be paid, even as a little kid with a box camera. So the kids would go to the school with their box cameras and take pictures of Robert or have pictures taken with Robert at the school. That's why there's so many photographs taken there. Yeah, you have a couple of the candid photos, but in the collection that, you, that you've shown me, most of those are the posed Correct. photograph. Robert must have posed for thousands and thousands of these photographs, some of them really quite silly. You have one where there's a, a midget, I guess, from the circus shouting up to Robert in that how is the weather up there pose. True. Did Robert ever draw the line and say, this is silly, I'm not going to do this? Realistically, only once. He, the family signed a deal with Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus, and Robert appeared at Ringling Brothers for a short period of time, but Robert always appeared in a coat and tie, three-piece suit, what have you, and he never had to, quote, perform unquote. Uh, Ringling Brothers people out of town would put him with the other individuals who had uh, physical disabilities or physical oddities and Robert never thought of himself that way and that's the only time that we have been cognizant that he physically said I don't want a part of this get me out of the circus. If somebody were to do a mini series of Robert Wadlow's life today for television the theme would be his father controlling his life the exploitation of Robert Wadlow. Was he exploited as a human being? Both yes and no. Again, you have to remember, we're talking the 1930s, the country was coming out of the Great Depression, and it was considered to be uh, 
standard practice for family members to work together to help support the family. And Robert Wood did this willingly and did it his entire life. And so in that context, it was not exploitation. By today's standards, yes, it would be considered exploitation. Had he lived on at age 22, and he was beginning to show some signs of independence, do we know, do you have an idea what sort of life he would have led beyond that? He began uh, thinking about maybe having a business here in the Upper Alton area, a shoe store is what he was thinking about. He expressed an interest in maybe having a, having a family, settling down, being a, quote, businessman, a self-sustaining businessman. And I think if he had been able to live his life to fruition, more than likely he would have achieved most of his goals, but he would have never gotten away from the family. More than likely, he and his father would have run the business together, and possibly his younger brother would have joined the business. If again, if Robert had lived. The thing about him is that for someone who was the world's largest man, a man who stood out no matter where he went, he seems remarkably to have been well adjusted. Very true. Robert was very comfortable with who he was. You have to remember he was always in the public eye ever since he was a very young person, starting from about age nine. And so he developed a certain sense of sophistication far beyond the experience of any of his peers. And so he was pretty comfortable with who he was. Like he said one time, uh, he said people should utilize their handicaps instead of fussing about them. He said, look at me, I'm getting along all right. So uh, it kind of says it all. It was on one of his out of town trips that Robert came down with an infection caused by the rubbing of a brace on his ankle, but really caused by the fact that he was nearly nine feet tall and still growing. He'd outgrown his nervous system and hadn't felt the pain until it got serious. It caused his death in 1940 at the age of 22. He was buried in Alton, which later erected in his memory and honor an amazingly life-sized statue.